This is Rosa Desktop Fresh R11 with the XFCE Desktop. It's also available with KDE4, KDE Plasma, and the LX Cute Desktops. To my knowledge, this is the first release with the XFCE Desktop. It's produced by LLC NTC IT Rosa, a Russian Linux developer, which is the principal successor to Mandriva Linux. For a little history, Rosa was formed in 2010 and came to the aid of Mandriva, which had just come under attack by its creditors and it worked with Mandriva for a couple of years. The last version of Mandriva, which was in 2011, was actually based on Rosa Linux. Rosa also has two enterprise versions, Rosa Enterprise Desktop and Rosa Enterprise Linux Server. And as a successful commercial company, it's the only one of the remaining Mandriva forks that is able to support updated repositories. The other two, Open Mandriva and Magia, are not-for-profit foundations, and they are currently based on Rosa Linux. This is the way it looked when I first installed it, except for the wallpaper, which had a mouse in the middle, the XFCE mouse. It just had one panel at the bottom and only one workspace was active. I've tweaked it the way I usually do with XFCE. I moved the panel to the top and I added a second panel at the bottom. The second panel has a show desktop icon, the window buttons, and a workspace switcher with four active workspaces. I've also revised the layout on the whisker menu. I've extended its length, which is easy to do. I've moved the categories to the left and the individual programs to the right, and I've also eliminated the program descriptions just to save space. Now the installer was somewhat unique but easy to use because it had the same basic functions as most installers like Columaris. I did encounter a few interesting problems which I wanted to discuss briefly. I booted into the live system only to find that there was no live system. It went directly into the installation. And I used custom partitioning as I always do so I could install it as I wanted to on my external drive. I had no trouble with the partitioning. But when it said it was writing the partitions to the disk, my external drive just sat there motionless. Its light was out. Nothing was happening. So after a while, I became aware that it was not writing anything to the disk. So I clicked on cancel, and it said, are you sure you want to cancel this operation and erase all the changes you have made? And I clicked on yes, whereupon it started to install the system. A little different outcome than I expected. However, it all turned out well. The installation went quite quickly, and the installation works perfectly. Now let me just take a quick look at what's on the menu. I'm going to start with accessories here. It has an alarm clock, application finder, bulk rename, calculator, clipman, configure graphics card, disks, help. It says get help with GNOME, but in this case I would be looking for help with XFCE. Install remove software which is RPM Drake in this case, a menu editor, mouse pad, notes, passwords and keys, Qt5 file system archiver, recall, find documents by specifying search terms, run program, screenshot, sensor viewer, services configuration, 
still have to scroll down a little bit here. Task Manager, Thunar File Manager, and X Archiver. Under Games, it has Isle Riot, Solitaire, and Zazz. Of course, you can install more. Under Graphics, it comes with GIMP version 2.10, Mistretto Image Viewer, and Xane Scanning. Under Internet, it comes with Chromium Web Browser, Deludes, my favorite BitTorrent client, Geary, which is a text editor aimed at developers, and UGIT, which is a way of downloading multiple URLs. Under Multimedia, it has Audacious, Bersaro, Cheese, Pulse Audio, Volume Control, QWinFF, Convert Between Media File Formats, Rosa Media Player, and I added Simple Screen Recorder. Let me just say that when I try to install Simple Screen Recorder with RPM Drake, I got an error message, but I was able to install it with ERPME, the command line interface, without any problems whatsoever. Under Office, it has the Trial Document Viewer, Dictionary. It has the LibreOffice Meta Package, but only two of its components, LibreOffice Calc and LibreOffice Writer. Of course, you can install the remainder. And it has Notebook Cherry Tree, which is hierarchical note-taking. I haven't tried that. Under Settings, it has quite a few. Uh, a few of these are not in the Settings window itself. So I'll go through all of these. It has About Me, About Myself, that seems somewhat redundant. Accessibility, Adobe Flash Player, this is preferences for Adobe Flash Player. It has Appearance, Bluetooth Adapters, Bluetooth Manager, Configure Authentication, Date Time, that's Drake Clock, Desktop, Display, Gparted, Grub Customizer, HP Device Manager, Interface Language. I have that set at English, but I still get a few Russian pages here and there. Keyboard Settings, Manage Users, Menu Editor, Mime Type Editor, and let me scroll down. Mouse and Touchpad, Network Connections, Notifications, Panel, Panel Profiles. I probably could have reconfigured my panel with this a little bit easier than I did. Parental Controls, Password, Personal Firewall, Power Manager, Preferred Applications, Print Settings, Pulse Audio Preferences, Qt5 Settings, Removable Drives and Media, Return to Default Settings, Samba Control Center, Screen Saver, SDDM Configuration, that's Cute Configuration Editor for SDDM. Select Screen Manager, Session and Startup, Settings Editor, Settings Manager, Software, Media Manager, Theme Configuration, Update Your System, Window Manager, Window Manager Tweaks, Workspaces, and the XFCE Terminal. And under System, we have Bulk Rename again, Configure Graphics Card, Gigolo, a simple front end to easily connect to remote file systems, Gparted again, Grum Customizer again. All of these XFCE menus seem to have a lot of duplication in them, and I think they would all benefit from a little culling. Hardware Central Configuration Information Tool, HP Device Manager, Print Settings, Proxy Settings, Pulse Audio Preferences, again, Rows of Freeze, uh, freeze your system before experiments. Rosa Image Writer, SDDM configuration, again. Sensor Viewer, Services Configuration, Task Manager, 
Funar File Manager, XFCE Terminal, all again. So let me take a look at the hardware configuration tool. I'm going to have to enter my password. Detection in progress. Ah, and there's the hardware configuration. It's quite extensive. And of course, I'm not going to go into all of this. Now, I don't have a separate video card, but here's the way. It's just the Atom processor from Intel. But presumably, if you did, this would detect it. That's worth looking into if you need it. Then, of course, if you want the settings window, you can get it up here. And this is settings. And again, it has most of the items that were covered in the menu, but not all of them. Now, under appearance, I haven't really changed much except for the desktop background. And this comes with the Vertex Light Respro style. And you have quite a few, as you often do with XFCE. I'm not going to go down all of them here, but there's quite a few familiar ones. Adwaita, Arc Dark, Arc, Breeze, Breeze Dark. There are many of them here. Same way under icons, it comes with the Rosa theme icons. As you can see, there's a large variety of additional ones. Actually, you have to scroll up here. You can spend several hours going through all of these options. Same way with fonts. And with settings, So this is still version 4.15 of the Linux kernel, which means that my somewhat old computer still works perfectly. I've had trouble, as I've indicated in recent videos, with kernel versions 4.18 and 4.19. Linux kernel 5 is still a question mark. So this should work fine for me and others with older computers. And it will still work with newer computers also, unless you need the absolute latest in hardware support. This is a screenshot of the free-m utility just after it first booted up. And as you can see, it used 462 megabytes of memory, about medium weight, which is what you would expect from XFCE. Now I'm going to demonstrate the use of RPM Drake, which they call Install and Remove Software. Enter my password. I'm going to install some missing components of LibreOffice. Press enter here and it shows that I have LibreOffice Calc. I'm going to click on LibreOffice Space and it says additional packages needed. Okay. I'm going to click on LibreOffice Draw. OK. LibreOffice Impress. For some reason it didn't ask for an OK there. And LibreOffice Math. And it didn't ask for an OK there. So now I'm going to click on Apply.
and it wants confirmation so I'm going to click on yes. So now it tells me to please wait, it's downloading packages. And that's it. Now it's initializing. Please wait, finding available packages. So now I'm going to look back at the menu under Office, and I have the full LibreOffice suite. So when I go into the meta package here, they're now all available. When I click on Help, If you haven't noticed already, this is version 6.0.7.3. Not the very latest, but fairly recent. I didn't go into backgrounds, but you can right-click on the desktop and go to Desktop Settings. And here you have several backgrounds. This is the one I'm using. This is the one it came with. So I'll go back to the one I was using just for consistency. Just a few final comments. Current versions of Rosa Desktop Fresh are supported for two years. I've always been able to install my printers and scanners using the RPM packages for installation, the same as I use for Fedora. And likewise, if you can't find something in the Rosa repositories, try the RPM search engine at rpm.pbone.net, and you're likely to find it there. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.